Hey, welcome. I'm gonna do a guide on how to switch to Linux for gamers. If you've been interested in at all in Linux and you've like tried to like find out where to start, you've, you've probably figured out what distros are. But in case you haven't and you're new, right? Uh, a distro is essentially just a different operating system that runs using uh, Linux as the kernel right there are so so many different distributions that when you're first starting out you, you don't know kind of kind of where to go uh where to look right uh, it's probably a big hurdle when you're first trying to get into something and you can't figure out where to start so i'll just give you uh i'll, I'll recommend two distros to start with right so manjaro here if i hit the try hit button here or the download right there's three different uh we'll call them flavors right uh the only difference between all of these is their desktop environment and that's just what the ui over everything looks like that's all the desktop environment is and like the default applications so xfce i would describe as kind of a windows 7 uh like in terms of look and feel uh, kde plasma i would describe as kind of windows 10 like in look and feel and gnome i would describe as kind of mac os like in look and feel although i might be completely wrong on that i've never used uh, mac os um so <laughs> yeah and then another distro i haven't used this one personally but I've only heard good about it is uh, Pop OS. Apparently it's pretty beginner friendly. If you hit download here, you have two options. You have uh, just 2104 and then you have 2104 NVIDIA. Um, so you download this top one here. If you have um, AMD or like Intel integrated, these are probably just open source video drivers. And then the second one is just proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Since I believe 20 series and up in NVIDIA won't like accept any drivers that aren't signed by NVIDIA. So it's functionally impossible to make any open source drivers for uh, newer NVIDIA cards which really sucks because NVIDIA isn't the greatest at maintaining their Linux drivers. So yeah, I'd recommend just starting with one of these two. Uh, don't get too bogged down in like worrying about picking the wrong one. Once you just pick like a distro and get into it a bit and then like start learning, it gets easier to pick a distro that you actually would want because you'll be, you'll know, you'll know enough to, about it to see what the differences between them are. But if you're just starting out just kind of pick one. Uh, I recommend picking one of these two. I'm more familiar with Manjaro. So if you want to follow along exactly, uh, download uh, KDE Plasma, because uh, that's what I'll be using. I'll walk you through that too. Don't worry. A lot of these, a lot of the things will apply broadly, but some of the more specific actions or commands that I do will be like specific to this distro. Uh, just hit get KDE Plasma over here and then you can download it. If you have an 8 gig of USB drive, even if you don't want to wipe your computer and uh, like switch right away, I still recommend following this part because when we put the uh, environment on a USB stick, we can boot straight to that and it will give you a desktop in the USB stick that you can play with, around with a little. So even if you don't plan on switching right now, I'd recommend to at, le at least following up to that part because it'll be fun and interesting if you're at all interested in this after you download it you can open uh, find where the file is and then open uh, powershell or the terminal in its directory then do a cert util and then dash hash file and then point to the file name and then after the file name type the uh the type of hash it's using. In this case, it's uh, SHA1, SHA1, and then wait for it to spit out the number, and then make sure it matches uh, on the website under the download where it says SHA1, make sure those two numbers match. And that will just verify that uh, your download isn't corrupted or anything like that. And then you're going to want to download a program called Bolina Etcher. 
I'll leave a link to it in the description. Then you can open it. You hit flash from file. You find the ISO file you downloaded and open. And then you select a target. You'll want to select uh, whatever USB drive you're going to use for this. Um, this will overwrite any data on it. So be aware of that. And then click flash. And then you'll just wait for that flash, flash uh, to finish. After you do that, you're going to shut down your computer. You're going to reboot it and then go into your BIOS. Then you're going to set that USB drive as your boot device. And then you're going to save and then reboot. All right. After you've uh, set the uh, USB drive as the boot device in your BIOS, uh, you should come to a screen that looks like this. You use the arrow keys to navigate. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to boot with proprietary drivers. Anything else, uh, do open source drivers. Uh, use enter to uh, select which one you're uh, booting with. All right, after you finish booting, you should come to a screen that looks kind of like this. You're in a live environment for the uh, operating system. You can play around in here, make sure your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your, your devices, make sure they all work, uh, make sure everything's going fine. Just uh, play around, uh, see how you like it. You probably won't be able to install anything. It'll probably give you weird errors about not having enough, enough space, even if your USB drive is pretty big so just play around and see how everything looks and feels and that and then if you don't like it you don't want to uh, keep it uh, you can just shut down uh, go to your bios and then s uh, select your hard drive as your boot device again and you'll be back in windows if you do decide you want to keep it you can either hit the launch installer button right here or you can double click this icon up here to launch the installer yeah, this is where you select a time zone, your language, a keyboard layout. Now, this is where you choose where it's installed. If you want to override a drive, you can just erase disk. Um, swap is pretty much a page file. Yeah, like the Windows equivalent would be a page file. If you have 16 gigs or, of RAM or more, uh, you probably don't need one. If you want hibernate, you'll have to have a swap uh, a swap if you want to install it but like not overwrite windows if you have another usb drive laying around you can plug that in and and install the operating system to that so that's what i'll do here uh i'll just hit next you can fill out um name login info the computer name password if you want this password to be the same for the admin account you can just hit this checkbox right here if you want to log in if you want it to log you in without you having to type your password you can hit this checkbox here this tells you uh what partitions it's going to make and overwrite and what it's going to do to the disk um as soon as you hit install here there's uh, no going back whatever like partitions you erased or selected will be overwritten. I am not responsible for any data you may lose doing this or attempting to do this. And now I just wait for it to finish. All right, once it's done uh, installing, you can hit restart now and hit done and it will restart. Um, and then after you do that, you'll go back into your BIOS and you'll set the boot device to whatever device you installed it on. Okay, after you reboot and set your boot device properly, you should be in. And you have the full download now. Now, this right here is your package manager. This is how you download and install things. Uh, this is also how you update your system. So right now we have an update, so apply. Type in your password and then let it update. Uh, but yeah, this is how you'll download things and do system updates. Okay, here's your file manager. Uh, it has probably all the functions you'd expect it to have. Files and drives are laid out a lot different here than they are in Windows. Yeah, basically your everything is in root. Root is just a forward slash. All your drives will be in here. 
um, everything is in there. Uh, there's no C or D drives, it's all under root. And that'll just be a difference you have to get used to. If you plan on using this and Windows at the same time, you'll want to do hardware clock in local time zone uh, because that's how, that's how Windows sets it. Uh, so if you want your clock to be accurate and keep using both this and Windows, you'll have to click that option. Um, if you don't plan on using Windows anymore, you can just set date and time off automatically, hit apply, and it should be accurate now. All right. Um, let's go to the Manjaro settings manager. You can update your kernel in here. Uh, you can install old versions and go back to those. You can install new versions. Um, and then a hardware configuration. You can auto detect uh, drivers for your hardware in here and it should download them. It should have done it already. Um, your graphics drivers should be installed already. Uh, they should be up to date. They'll keep up to date in the package manager like everything else in the system. So as long as the install went okay, uh, you have your graphics drivers already and they're up to date. If we, if we go to games, uh, Steam is pre-installed. Now, if you click this button here, it'll sort by games that will run on Linux. You go up here to Steam Settings, uh, Steam Play down at the bottom. If you enable Steam Play for all other titles, this will let you play all your Windows games. Uh, now, pretty much any single player game is safe to try. As long as it doesn't have like an anti-cheat, it's safe to at least try it and see if it works. If it does have an anti-cheat, uh, be careful. I know Easy Anti-Cheat has Proton support now, but it's still opt-in for developers, and Battleeye hasn't enabled it yet, but even when it does, it's still opt-in for developers, so make sure the game is supported before you try it. Um, now, Steam is nice and easy to do, so what about... Uh, something like the Epic Game Store or any other game launcher. All right, we'll just go to our package manager and we'll go grab Lutris. Hit this button, hit apply. You'll want to click all of these. Okay, now that that's finished, we can open up Lutris. Games, right there, Lutris. All right, now, down here, if we go to the Lutris tab and we search for Epic Games, we can see the Epic Games store here. We just hit install, click install here. You can pick a directory for it to install in, then you'll hit install. All right, now make sure both of these are on download. Hit continue, hit install. All right, once that's finished, you can just hit launch. All right, and then you can just sign in and it should work like normal. Now you can just go into your library and uh, download and play things. Um, same goes here as for Steam. Uh, be careful about trying games with anti-cheat. All right, uh, the process will be similar for other stores. Uh, again, just be careful with anti-cheats and stuff. Um, if anything ever hangs or freezes, you can open up Lutris. Um, anything using wine will be under this wine tab here and you can click stop and it will kill the process and then if that doesn't work there's also this arrow and you can hit kill all wine processes and that should also kill anything if anything locks up or freezes or whatever and then some other quick tips um, don't expect everything to work the same way that it does on Windows, and then don't try to make it work the way it does in Windows. Other than that, that should be enough to uh, get, get you going. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you liked it, uh, like the video. Uh, if you want more videos like this, subscribe, and I will see you later.